So after episode 16 of The Flash, we only have two more episodes before the season is over. And next week is the 150th episode, which if it's anything like Arrow's 150th was, it'll be fantastic. I mean, in terms of quality, because I thought Arrow's 150th was fantastic. So hopefully The Flash can keep that kind of quality. But after that, we won't have any new episodes of The Flash until at least November. But really quick before getting into this review, I just want to ask you to please subscribe if you haven't already. I make Marvel and DC videos almost every week, and subscribing really does help to keep the motivation to make these videos, so it would be a huge help. But um, I was pretty open about how I was sort of uninterested, or at least not really feeling last week's episode of The Flash, as much as most of the fanbase. I thought this week was much more of an improvement, honestly, mainly due to the addition of John Diggle and the fact that we mostly focused on one god speed this time, rather than a huge army of them. I also just want to say that I actually think the soundtrack they're using for Godspeed is great. It really reminds me of what they use for both Thawne and Zoom. But Diggle, unsurprisingly, was the absolute high point of the episode for me. I've just loved seeing him appear across the Arvids these last few weeks, and this episode was by far his biggest appearance, and actually gave us some hints at the future of the Lantern Ring. One thing that really surprised me was Diggle's reference of being in Gotham, because I can only imagine how hard it must have been to make these episodes line up, especially with COVID and constant delays and all that. But, um... One reason why I'm so surprised by that is that some of the articles that came out in May and such sort of imply that there would be absolutely no references or ties between these Diggle episodes and that they could easily be watched in any order because COVID would just make it too hard to line these episodes up. So it's just sort of interesting to me that they went through the effort of saying definitively that this episode is set after Batwoman. Speaking of the ring and the Green Lantern Corps itself, some really cool hints were when Cecile described John's headaches as infinite, and also when John started freaking out on the field, we could hear voices that kept saying, worlds await, clearly implying some big galaxy or galactic stuff of lanterns out there, I feel. But at the end of the episode, John said that he's been putting something off and needs to deal with it. And we know the character is showing up in Superman and Lois next week, and also in Supergirl in September. And assuming Supergirl doesn't get delayed or whatnot, I think that the episode with John Dick will be airing in September. So I'm wondering if we'll get any traction on John needing to deal with all this over in those episodes, or we're not going to actually see anything until the next Arrowverse crossover, but either way, I'm really excited to see what happens. I really love Chester fanboying over Diggle, calling him the heart and soul of Team Arrow, and Arrow Queen's right hand man and such, that was all really nice, and it was also really great to see John suit up as Spartan once again after so long with nothing. There was also a really nice scene between Dig and Barry, where Diggle starts to explain to Barry how important family is, and it's honestly kind of crazy how big of a theme family is this season. It feels like every single aspect of the season has thematically been that way somehow, like the Speed Force stuff was family. Allegra and Ultraviolet is all about family, Kramer and her brother Adam is all about family, and then we have this whole thing with Barry, Iris and the kids, but being completely honest, this is the absolute only time this season where I think the family angle worked. I think the writing, the way they are doing it, and just the way everything's been done the past 15 episodes hasn't really been working personally, so this is the only time I think the family stuff was actually working. I thought Barry screaming at Chester and Allegra is something that will be important later on because we've seen Barry get that serious and angry with Caitlin and Cisco a bunch of times in the past but if I'm remembering right this is the first time he's lost his cool on the two of them and meaning um, Chester and Allegra but speaking of Barry real quick the final scene with Nora and Bart was great it was a fantastic introduction to Bart in my opinion and in like one scene they made me interested and wanting to see more of the character even hearing him say Crash just felt like Young Justice brought to live action, and I was not expecting to see Bart until next episode, so when Norris showed up and started talking about him and how he'll be here in a second, I was really, really, really worried they were just going to cut the episode, not show him, and just kind of tease it for next week, so I'm really happy that they decided to actually show him this episode. It was a really nice surprise for a lot of people who have been following, you know, set pictures, news and all that, and assuming he wasn't going to show up till next episode. The Allegra and Ultraviolet stuff was once again pretty poor, I felt. Uh, in my opinion, this aspect has been dragging down every episode that it's in, so thankfully it does seem to be over now. But the thing is, is that it's kind of ridiculous that they go through so much story with these two characters over the last two episodes just to kill Ultraviolet like this. It definitely feels that like the character was just a plot device to push Allegra on, and I'm not too crazy about that, honestly. Also, in terms of this kind of stuff, I have started to hate the Joe Kramer stuff. I felt like that was also sort of a letdown in all the episodes it's been in. I think Joe and Jesse L. Martin, just in general, deserve a storyline much better than whatever the hell this is. I was originally sort of hopeful because I thought that the Adam storyline would tie into the Godspeed stuff, but it really does just seem to be its own standalone storyline with no ties to anything else, and that's pretty unfortunate in my opinion. Besides that, I do have one other complaint, and it's that the show really does like to do this big horror sound noise 
anytime someone gets a pain in their head or anytime somebody gets a pain or something and like it happened a bunch of times in this episode whenever Diggle got the headache and this big loud horror soundtrack would play it just sounds really stupid in my opinion and this isn't the only episode that's happens in it happens quite a bit in these episodes where like somebody will get huge pain in their head and then the soundtrack will just get really loud all of a sudden kind of to imply something sudden is happening which I mean I get it I just I just don't think it it really works i think it it kind of takes you out of the episode for a second oh i was also surprised to see both dion and iris show up halfway through the episode and it was actually it was honestly pretty cool to see him to see dion uh i was surprised to see iris just because i thought considering the episode started with barry doing that thing he did last episode where he was talking to her when she was off screen i thought we just weren't going to see her again so i was surprised to see her show up but dion was the one i was most surprised about just because i didn't think we'd see him again for a while and i honestly actually liked him this episode and also the soundtrack they used for him is kind of great not gonna lie i, I think it's, it really suits him and it really works but yeah i really enjoyed the episode much more than last week which is mostly because of diggle uh but how did you feel about the episode did you like it did you hate it and uh, i should have a review for loki up tomorrow hopefully and thankfully superman and lois is back next week so there'll be reviews for that but another reminder to subscribe if you can, that'd be a huge help, and to like, share, and all of that, and I hope you have a great day.